Good morning. Good evening, Akash. Almost good morning for you, Akash. Hello, everyone. Hey, Taylor. Give it a few minutes for folks to join. I dropped the meeting notes link in the Zoom chat and add name and agenda items. Good morning, Rich. Good morning, Taylor. Giving folks some time to join here. Well, it's about five after I drop the meeting notes in. And if you have any agenda items, the rest just add your name. Does anyone have anything uh, to add agenda item wise? All right. All right, so um, the KubeCon Amsterdam schedule is live. Um, 
check that out. There's a, a lot of events going on. Um, the Cloud Native Telco Day, CFPs closed this past uh, Sunday. And if you got your CFP in and you're picked as a speaker, then you're going to get a um, all conference pass. So that'll include all the the KubeCon and everything. Mm -hmm. If you have a, does anyone know about any specific KubeCon talks that they recommend for the group? Is anyone here planning on going to KubeCon Amsterdam? I won't be, but I know other people from F5 are going to be there. All right. Is F5 going to uh, be speaking? So our, the Nginx side, uh, I think might be, I know they're going to have a booth there at KubeCon. I'm not sure if they're speaking. I'll right. have to check that. I did not know that um, Nginx merged or whatever with F5. Yeah, F5 acquired Nginx, I think 2018, 2019, somewhere around there. Um, so yes, the um, Nginx is part of F5. Yeah, I see a blog announcement. May 2019, that was an announcement. So whenever, probably talking all the way back in 2018. Okay, that's cool. Um, Is it still the core Nginx team? Yeah, a lot of the core Nginx people are still there. Absolutely, yeah. Hmm. I think Gus has moved on, but uh, a lot of the core developers are still there. All right. It's um, an interesting project, the way it's built and uh, embedded. Uh, languages that can be used for the modules to expand on it. It's cool. So the, the, there's going to be an Nginx uh, booth there. All right. Well, um, we were thinking that we would have, I guess I can add it down here. Um, CNF, oh, CNF working group, um, informal birds of a feather session at KubeCon. So this wouldn't be on a schedule. It would be more of we're going to find an area and table, whatever, just sit down and have a session, maybe even have, you know, if anyone wants to present or talk about something for a short Again, birds of a feather, just real short style at KubeCon. So is, do you think that would be of interest for any of the Nginx folks or whoever is going to be there from F5? Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm trying to get the, I think we're having a conversation uh, this week. Um, about potential sponsorship and so just in addition to nginx but also f5 as well and so once i hear back from that i'll i'll let you know who's going to be there from the f5 side all right
sounds good. Okay. Um, I'd like to hear from y'all, like what would be something that isn't, you know, important or motivates F5 that would be maybe something the working group and then the broader telecom CNCF initiatives would look good. And this can be talked about before KubeCon, but if there's something to go in there. Um, one thing that I've been looking at with Victor Morales and some other folks would be like what's happening with NFIO and the whole onboarding of CNFs and potentially some best practices that can come into this working group and, and go other places. So those are things that we could dig into and ahead of time and maybe there. But if there's areas that F5 is looking at that we could focus on some more that may be something we haven't been looking at, we'd love to hear that feedback. Yeah, I think NFBO is definitely, I mean, we're, um, we sit on the technical, um, we're, we have one person on the technical, technical steering committee of NFBO. Um, uh -huh. And so that, that, I think the, the intersection between, you know, this, this CNF working group and what they're proposing there would be of interest. Um, the other project that got kicked off recently um, is also, um, are you familiar with Sylvia? Yes, yeah, Silva. Silva, sorry, Sylvia. Silva, that's correct. And so I think that's, it's, you know, uh, it'd be interesting uh, as well. I think it, that's kind of European led, but I still think what they're trying to do is is define a standard way of, of building a kind of a telco cloud environment and you know running CNFs on it. And so um, I think understanding that intersection there is is also interesting for us. We're not part of uh, Silva right now, but we are definitely looking and keeping an eye on it. We're definitely interested in Silva and we've talked with some folks there. Um, some of them went to the Elephants One Summit this past year and we met up with some of those folks. Silva is using the work from the CNF test suite and CNF certification as part of it and part of uh, Annika, yeah, the testing yeah, portion yeah, like RC two. Got it. Yeah, I saw that Annika is references a lot of the CNF test suite that that you guys have put together. So, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and uh, I mean, there's I I guess figuring out what are the differences that have people. Um, if I think of like open source, why does someone fork? It can be politics, of course. It can be someone just interested in understanding, or maybe there's features missing in what you're building. So um, there's something that the folks said. So that's Linux Foundation Europe, but where Silva is homed. And you know, there's something that they're wanting um, that wasn't happening, it seems, from the other projects. And I, I know that there's a lot of, you know, there's quite a few groups that are involved in that. Uh, Vodafone 
is a CSP that has at least a portion of, you know, when you, when you say anything about a, a large org, there's always lots of different groups within the orgs, but part of Vetaphone is in, involved in um, help kick off Silva. So yeah, definitely interested in collaborating and whether we are a upstream project feeding stuff into those, which is fine because we're providing for lots of different um, areas. And I think that's okay. And if you think open source, you can do that. And then where we can learn and pull stuff in because it would be good for um, feeding stuff directly into the, the CNCF telecom as well as any projects. So if, if we get feedback to other CNCF projects to improve, then that's good too. So if if you all have a, if you're involved with Silva and have a, a, a good way to connect or whatever, then I'd like to chat with you more about that. Yeah, we, like I mentioned, we haven't we haven't started to participate in Silva yet, but I think it's it's definitely an area of interest for us. Um, All right. And but if we do engage uh, deeper and, and get involved with Silva, then yeah, I, I we definitely talk to you about it. Okay. You can maybe reach out to me about the what's happening with Nefeo later. With the okay. Talks. And maybe just uh, I'll throw out one other thing uh is um something that we started to look at uh from an fi perspective is are you familiar with uh the gateway api um working group out of the sig networking uh the kubernetes sig networking yeah there's a subgroup yeah. underneath that called gateway api uh-huh um it's something that we're we're starting to get involved with, uh, mainly because some of the our experiences of using, you know, just the the maybe some of the limitations of Kubernetes networking in a telco environment. Um, you know, there's different protocols that telco support that that you know the standard kubernetes networking doesn't support natively and it looks like there was there's good work being done out of the gateway api to you know um kind of enhance or have a standard way of you know um configuring and defining the objects related to kubernetes networking and that's what the gateway api is about um, and they've been a lot, very focused on ingress. One of the things that we're um, looking to do is help uh, also define some of the, the egress, uh, Kubernetes egress networking. And uh, I think, I don't know if you met Phil um, at KubeCon North America, but Phil Clatsy, who's one of our product managers, um, he wrote a document and kind of presented that to the Gateway API uh, working group last week, uh, talking about some of the, the egress networking. I can share that with you or point you to that because um, I think it's up on Google Docs uh, if you're interested. Yeah, sounds great. Um, can you drop a, a link in this um, section here? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that right now. All right. Do you know if um, those objects that they're looking at adding is related to the multi-network working group efforts to add um, so more support for expand the network objects that are supported there beyond the single interface? I think so. Um... I mean, it seems like if, I mean, it there, I know that it's could be independent, but it seems like, um, or it, it probably is and should be designed to work independently so that you can take advantage of each, um, like that 
but building them together seems like you could have more complex and advanced um, implementations that are using the these Kubernetes objects and make it all native. Yeah, what, I mean, so some of the things that we've done around Kubernetes networking, you know, we use, you know, custom CRDs for, you know, uh, defining that networking. And it looks like the Gateway API group are kind of more standardizing that and using, using APIs um, to define the networking objects. And so that's, we like the idea of having that of more of a standard way of doing that instead of, you know, people building CRDs. And so that's why we got involved. Um, so. All right. You can take a look at that document. Uh, the multi-network side seems like it would be uh, consuming the different these different type of connections that could happen to those objects um, yeah. with the whole multi on the on the actual pods having if you're going to have multiple interfaces sort of just being on the flat network if you need that but you're wanting to set up the connections from something that's standardized in the community instead of building the custom crds so you yes. have uh, you use the the gateway these new objects and then you have um multiple interface objects that are set up it's interesting i think how so they i guess the ingress is probably something that's coming out now in new versions and the egress would be something that's so yeah, Ingress is well supported. Uh, you know, I, there's like uh, I think HTTP object. There's TCP. Um, you know, I think they have some other uh, protocols and in, in the beta version for Ingress. But um, Egress is really um, hasn't been looked at. I think it was interesting when when Phil presented this last week at the working group. Um, there seemed to be a lot of interest or uh, not a lot, but there was definitely interest from, from people in the working group of, of wanting to look at the egress side. So there was definitely some support for it. All right. Let's see, I don't have any pull requests open. On the issue side, as far as um, new ones go, I think we may have talked about this during the call. So this is just some um, cleanup that needs to happen. Um, so there's a agreement, there was an agreement on working on the CNCF glossary and trying to move some stuff in there. And while working with Victor last week, we were on a best practice that I'll get to here in a minute. We were thinking the term least privilege and maybe some of the security um, items should move into the CNCF glossary or be added. So put this here. Um, we already have a whole document on least privilege. So we could definitely reference that. This one is just one link, but we have a whole Google Doc with a lot of content. Um, but we keep referencing least privilege and different security best practices, so that could be good. It's not there yet in the CNCF doc. And I'll open this here in a second. So to get, we'd like to get more best practices published into the working group. Um, ideally, we'll have this, you know, filled out with a lot of different best practices. Uh, you can go and click and read about each, and we can point people to this document, like as a starting place. Here's 
where you can go. Um, some of the wording and scope of how we talk about the group may need to change, but the, the point has always been having, having somewhere we can point colleagues and peers and other people that we're meeting in the community and saying, here's the best practices that the community as a whole, networking, cloud native, everybody that we're saying, hey, these are good things to adopt. Um, so as part of that um, effort, Victor Morales, Samsung and I were working on this best practice. So it's a draft. Um, we have a link here. We're wanting to get some feedback and would like to get this um, into the GitHub and, and we're going to start working on some other ones. but. We already have a best practice about not running cross, uh, not running processes as the UID zero or privilege user root in containers. And this is kind of related. So this is a, a, a least privileged type of best practice. So don't run the containers or um, pod as privileged, which would be all the containers in the pod. So this is referring specifically to the privilege flag. And we've, we've filled in the different sections that would go in, um, kind of leaving it in a semi markdown um, format. So it's simply we're saying best practice don't run your containers as privileged so that if they have a bug they're compromised for whatever reason um, they will have less likely access to any host resources and talk a little bit on the motivation what are our goals and non goals. So we're not covering everything. There's always other ways of um, doing these things, but what are we covering in this one? So this is specifically about the privilege flag being set to false. And then go into why it's problematic and um, linking to other areas to talk about that a little bit. So this is non-system pod types. So cube, cubelet and there's other system pods that are going to have their running privilege. Uh, we're, we're talking about a best practice for most um, pods. Most CNS and the pods and containers should run non-privileged. And to give more context, we're linking over to, these are a set of user stories um, that were published by some security folks that have been working with us, uh, supply chain attacks and specific sub, uh, sub cases where if they have Privileged, a privileged container, what could happen in those? Uh, I see that this says non root. So I'm going to add a comment. Change to refer to um, so to update that. This is talking about how if you have a deployment method like Helm or whatever it is, that's going to pull in lots of different images and specifically those images having different pod definitions. Some of them may have privilege flags set to true. So you may be building a product or your CNF that has um, 
it's well someone may I'll, I'll say product so you may have a product or a, a larger project that has a lot of different sub pods <clears throat> and yours may not have privilege set to true but you need to make sure and check or the are the other ones if it's unexpected and of course some of them may need to be running privileges so the system pods will be an example but also stuff like sidecars and stuff so communicating that it's running privilege we actually have a a a write-up in the working group about how to communicate a good method some good practices for communicating that you're essentially not following the best practices <clears throat> so you're telling your the consumers of the CNS, and they can make decisions on what to do. Um, and then there's a related item about raising privileges. So there's different things that can happen where a, a pod could actually go from unprivileged to privilege. Well, those are something we probably need to address somewhere, maybe in a different um, best practice or something or a write-up that we that we reference <clears throat> but that's something to keep in mind and then we have a lot of references here um, including all the discussions that we've done the least privileged document we probably need to publish in in the docs section or somewhere since it has a whole lot of content and then just links to where a lot of folks have talked about essentially this best practice. And then some alternatives. Right now we just have a pretty simple um, RBAC type of five, fine grain policy management. And the, the other part would be if, if we're talking about a best practice, is it something that we think we can test or is it just a concept and an idea? So this particular best practice we know is testable. We can actually look and see, we can do static analysis and say, do the definitions have uh, the privilege flag set to true or false? We can also look at the running containers and the manifest via the Kubernetes API. So this one's testable, um, which means if you're a developer and wanting to check, you're building a product and have it part of your CI, or you're an operator and doing onboarding for a CNF, you could test this. Any questions or comments? Right. Well, um, y'all can share this with folks who would like to get any feedback, add stuff, modify, whatever. We'll get a pull request in um, and then try to get it published soon. Working on some other things. We do have in mind to have some best practices on the onboarding side and looking at highlighting best practices that we think should be adopted more commonly or maybe already are that the NEFIO group is doing. So Rich, if y'all have insight into any best practices there, that could be something just list starting with like a list. Here's some things to look at would be good. And if anyone has ideas for other best practices, you know, appreciate it. All right, does anyone have anything else?
Okay. The CNF test suite certification has a, a technical working session on Tuesdays, so tomorrow. And that is at, let's see, that's at 7.15 Pacific time for those that would like to join and, and talk about anything on the technical side of the certification test suite and best practices. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. CNF Working Group. Thanks, everyone. Have a good Thank week.